Sharky Gaming here. So today we're going to take a look at the Joytech Racon Advanced Analog Racing Controller. This is for PlayStation 1 and it's basically a handheld racing wheel. So firstly, let's take a look at the box. So on the box there you can see a picture of the actual controller. And of course you can see the name Racon Advanced Analog Racing Controller. And it's made by Joytech for the PlayStation 1. Now, there's a couple of things written on here, which I'll just read out. These are some of the features. Explore the hidden true analog steering, acceleration, braking in games like Ridge Racer, Ridge Racer Revolution, Wipeout, Air Combat, Cyber Sled, and more. 100% true analog control. Accurate and precise proportional on steering and throttle. Semi-auto transmission option for car racing available. Totally replaceable tabletop steering wheel, easy to take anywhere. So that is the front of the box. The top of the box just has the name. Side of the box, same thing. Bottom, other side. And turning on to the back, it shows the controller again, but it does point out the key features of this controller. So we'll just read some of these here, and I'll try to get this a bit more in focus. Additional L and R buttons for convenient gameplay. Rubber grip on steering wheel to ensure tight control. Power up indicator. Up button for gear shift down, down button for gear shift up, semi auto transmission mode selectable. Steering wheel precise proportional steering control, effective turning angle range changeable, reliable component to ensure min 1 million times of turning. Throttle trigger precise proportional throttle control, pull back to accelerate, push forward to brake. Additional two button for, e for easy braking. Left, right, A, B, L, R, and start buttons. So that is the back of the box. Pretty basic. Now let's go ahead and open this up and take a closer look at this controller. So first up you get a manual, and the manual is kind of helpful because um, it goes through a lot of the advanced functions of how to actually um, change the degrees of twisting for the wheel itself. Um, so for instance here yeah, you've got adjustable simulator twisting range um, and it goes through a couple of different games like uh, if you're using Rikon set by default equivalent plus minus 30 degrees twisting of Namco Nijikon um, then you can change it to uh, plus minus 90 degrees twisting of the Namco Nijikon and you do that by pressing the B button while turning the power on so powering the control on holding the B button down you can change the degrees of twist and you can also change it to plus 180 degrees twisting on the Namco Nijikon by pressing and holding the start button when turning the power on so there's a couple of different modes that you can change it and over here it goes through how you can actually switch it um, to change it to semi auto transmission mode so this is when you can use those um, up and down buttons to actually switch the gears up and down or to have it to actually try automatically do it over length of time um, it automatically goes on if you hold down the buttons. So it goes through quite a few different interesting things in here and goes through the advanced features of it. So it's very handy to have. So this is the Rakon. At least I think that's how you pronounce this. Rakon, Rakon. Wouldn't really know how you pronounce the name of this controller. Um, I'm assuming it's meant to be like race, like a race con, but it's got no E, so I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. But anyway, moving along, uh, this is the cable, so you've got a PlayStation plug, you've got a fairly decent length of cable there. Um, it's not hugely long, but it should be enough to go to your console. And then you've got the Rycon or race con itself. So it looks like an RC controller. It's a pretty small, as you can see, I can really easily hold it. It's a pretty small little controller. So first in the center here, you've got um, your little throttle. Um, so you basically pull back like this to accelerate and you push forward to brake. And there's another button in the handle here, which also acts as a brake as well. So if you prefer to press that instead of doing that, you can do so. Now on the top of the controller, you've got an L and R button. Um, which it really depends on the game if they support extra functions if the game has a couple of extra functions It'll probably be using these buttons here. If not, you probably won't need to use them at all uh, Moving on to the wheel portion here. 
This is your steering wheel. And it has a rubber grip on the end there. I can't, don't know if you can actually make out that kind of pattern. It's actually got a pattern on there, so it's a bit easier to grip onto. And like I mentioned in there, you can actually change the degree of rotation. At the moment, it's on default to match the Nijikon controller. Um, but you can change it to 90 degrees twist rotation as well as 180 degrees twist rotation. So it's pretty cool. Not many wheels you can actually do that with these kind of handheld wheels. So it's a cool little extra feature they've added. Uh, really easy to turn the wheel. Uh, you can hold it with multiple fingers or just two fingers, whatever you prefer. On the side of the wheel here, you've got your um, basic up and down buttons. These are pretty hard, I find. Uh, when you press them down, they are pretty hard buttons. Um, these are meant to be used as your gear shift up and down when you're using it as um, your manual transmission. Um, so you're actually meant to press these when you want to gear shift up and down. Um, so I guess you can hold it like this, or you can steer and you can press them like this. Whatever is really more comfortable for you, I guess, if you want to use um, that manual gear changing mode. Um, I find these buttons pretty hard though. Uh, that's one thing I don't like about them. Um, they're pretty hard to press down. I'm not sure if it's meant to be like that, um, so it's not easy to press them accidentally. Um, but I just find them a little bit hard because you've got to use quite a bit of force to press those buttons in. Over here is your power indicator, so that'll light up when you've actually got this connected to your console, um, to getting power to it. And moving down at the bottom here, which I'll try to get this a better look at it, uh, you've got a start button in the front here. You've got your left and right buttons just there. Uh, you've got A and B in the center there. And the A and B buttons are usually used to navigate your menus to going into things. And of course you've got another set of the L and R buttons. So those L and R buttons are the same as these top buttons at the top there. So you've got an extra set on top for convenient gameplay, but they're down here in case you want to use them. So most of these buttons here you're just used for your menu access and going back and forth. And um, you use these two extra ones if the game actually supports a couple of extra functions. Otherwise for the most part you'll just be using your throttle, uh, so accelerate and brake and your steering mechanism just there. And these things are out of the way so you don't accidentally press them. Now this controller does work pretty well and I really like those advanced features of it, having to adjust that wheel degree of rotation and also turning it to semi-auto as well as manual transmission to use them for your gear changing. Um, I don't like how hard these buttons are though. I feel these buttons here are a bit too hard. And these buttons up the top here, they stick quite a bit. Um, they're not the best responding buttons. I don't know if you can even see that when I press it, sometimes it'll stick. There we go, that's stuck. And you got to press it to unstick it. Um, so, not the best buttons on the top here. Um, but it still offers a lot of advanced, con advanced features, considering what a small, uh, kind of, really small, compact racing controller this thing is. Uh, so what it offers, it's pretty impressive considering it's a PlayStation 1 controller. Um, it's really small and compact. The reason you'd want something like this is, of course, if you don't have space um, for a bigger full-size steering wheel, you get something like this. A bit more smaller, a bit more compact. You can take it anywhere with you. Um, it doesn't take up as much space. Uh, and you can still race with analog controls. So it's pretty cool, very compact. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool little racing controller. It does have its little faults, um, but I have to remind myself it is a PlayStation 1 controller. It doesn't. Ha it hasn't had too much advancements. It's pretty old. It's got a decent grip down here on the handle, and overall the controller is designed pretty decently. Uh, really nice and compact. It's actually much more small than some of the other racing grip controllers that I have like this, um, the RC controllers. So it is a lot more compact than them, and it does have a bit of different assortment. Most of them actually take the PlayStation buttons and put them on here to match, but this one has its whole unique kind of button system. Um, so, you know, you got to figure out what button does what really in terms of the buttons. Um, so you'll have to figure out what button exactly does it. And the reason they've done this is to sort of match the Nijikon. Um, if you haven't seen the Nijikon, I have done a video of the Nijikon controllers on my channel. But the Nijikon controller is another racing controller, and they've based a lot of the functions of this one off the Nijikon. They've just made it into an RC style controller. So instead of having that kind of twist grip, because the Nijikon's like this and you twist it, um, you have your traditional RC controller with the wheel on the side where you use one hand for the wheel and one hand for your acceleration and brake. But they've based a lot of the functions off the Nijikon controller and have tried to add to that. So you can actually change the degrees of rotation here so you get more beneficial out of whatever game you're sort of playing. 
So whether it be, you know, a racing game, something like Wipeout, or your Ridge Race or anything, or an Air Combat game, um, like Air Combat, or, you know, whatever Air Combat game you're actually playing. So you can quite easily adjust that to game or what game you're actually playing to get the best benefits out of it. So overall, it's a pretty decent controller. It could have used some improvement, especially on these buttons, which are supposed to use quite often. But like the how thick they are, or how tough they are to press down, and how these ones stick, I really don't know that you really want to use this as your primary PlayStation 1 racing controller. There are a lot better racing controllers that don't have those hard buttons or the sticky buttons at the top there. Um, but it's advanced features, not many other racing controls actually have those advanced features of your t twisting degrees as well as your semi-auto semi -auto or manual transmissions. Um, so that is a really cool feature for something such a simple controller. But anyway guys, I think that's about all I can say about this one. This is the Racon or Racecon or whatever, however you want to actually pronounce the name of that. Um, it's made by Joytech for the PlayStation 1. It's a pretty cool racing controller. Um, you can still get these pretty easily now, and they use you around $15 to $20, so they're not too expensive, and you can find them pretty easily with their box as well. So not too hard to find at all. But anyway guys, thanks for watching, I am Sharky Gamer. Don't forget to subscribe, I'll have heaps more gaming controller and accessory videos up very shortly. If you like this video, hit that like button, it really helps out a lot guys. And as always, feel free to leave a comment down below if you want to, and of course, share the video as that helps spread my video around. Anyway guys, thanks for watching.